Greetings everyone, this is Michael, G0POT, and today I'd like to do a quick review of the new Sota Beam's Whisper Light, this tiny lightweight whisper transmitter. But before we have a look at this in detail, let's just have a quick review of what Whisper is. My analogy is that if JT65 and Reverse Beacon Network had babies, that baby would be Whisper. But let's take a look and see what the internet has to say about Whisper. WSPR, pronounced Whisper, stands for Weak Signal Propagation Reporter, and it uses a program which compresses just a small amount of information and sends it over a roughly 110 second duration with strong forward error correction. Basically, you act as a beacon and send your data with lots of redundancy to give the receiving station the best possible chance of being able to decode it correctly, which means you can be decoded over very long distances with very low power. Whisper was originally written and released in about 2008 by Joe Taylor, Kilo One, Juliet Tango. Incidentally, if you've never come across Joe, go and check him out on the internet. He's an amazing guy, an astrophysicist by profession. He's created a number of weak signal modes for amateur radio and is a true explorer in our hobby. So there are two parts to this Whisper mode. Transmitting, where you act as a beacon, and receiving. You don't have to do both. The transmissions, which are low power, typically from a few milliwatts up to a watt or two, carry the station's call sign, maidenhead, grid locator and transmitter power in decibels. The program is designed to decode signals with a signal to noise ratio as low as minus 28 dB. Receiving stations with internet access can automatically upload their reception reports to a centralised online database called WhisperNet. And this provides a very simple way to view the data, either in tables or with a propagation map. The standard message payload looks like this. And the protocol allows for 28 bits for the call sign, 15 bits for the locator and 7 bits for the power level. Note that the power is sent in decibels or dBm. This is an abbreviation for power ratio in decibels, dB, of the measured power reference to 1 milliwatt. As you can see, it's possible to convey power levels using just two digits. Transmissions normally start at the beginning of an even minute, so in our case, we'd start the transmission about now. Transmissions take just under two minutes, and it's best if you repeat these randomly over time so that stations aren't continuously transmitting. This reduces the interference and improves your chances of being heard. Now this video is just an overview, so I won't go into the technical details of the mode, but if you want to find out more, I'll put some links in the description below. So, back to the Sotabeam's Whisper Light. You get three things when you buy the Whisper Light. You get the transceiver, or beacon if you prefer. You get a configuration utility for setting it up with your own preferences. And you also get access to a website called DExplorer, which contains a number of analysis tools to allow you to look at your results. Let's start by having a look at the Whisper Light itself. The unit is a tiny self-contained propagation beacon transmitter. It measures just 56 by 50 by 17 millimeters, or if you want to include all the sticky out bits, that's 65 by 50 by 23 millimeters, and it weighs just 43 grams. It's powered via the micro USB socket, and even though it only requires a maximum of 150 milliamps, you want to ensure reasonable quality supply is used to avoid introducing interference. The aerial output is an SMA socket and to connect to a typical HF aerial you're going to need a BNC or PL259 converter. My preference is a dongle as this takes any stress off the whisper light itself. And let's face it, this thing doesn't weigh a whole lot more than the PL259. The whisper light operates on 160, 80, 40, 30 and 20 meters and the unit contains filters for 30 and 20 meter operation. If you want to operate on other bands you'll require band specific low pass filters and so to beams now make a multi-band filter for this. The output is adjustable from 5 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts and we'll take a look at how to set this up shortly using the configuration utility. Finally on the front of the unit you have a single push button to start the beacon. Remember you need to do this at the beginning of an even minute and an LED, which indicates the whisper light is transmitting. OK, let's load up the configuration utility and get this thing connected to a PC. So to configure the unit, we plug it into our laptop or desktop PC using a USB lead. You'll note that while plugged in, the LED flashes red. 
we're almost ready to configure this thing. The first time you plug your Whisper Lite into your PC, it will automatically download the drivers. Let me just open the Windows dialog box so we can see the drivers being installed. The unit installs as a USB UART bridge, and hopefully we can see it's installing on COM4. Right, let's start the config utility, which I've already installed from the SOTABeams website. To connect your Whisper Lite, we have to choose the correct serial port from the drop-down box. I only have one device set up, but you may have to select the correct serial port to use. Once this is done, we select Connect. We now need to set up the unit and configure it with the information that will form the transmitted payload, so call sign and locator. I'm putting the full locator in, but only the first four characters are used. If you're not sure of your locator, click on the Find My Locator link and use the web mapping tool to find your QTH. The unit only has built-in low-pass filtering for 20 and 30 metres, so if you select, say, 40 metres, you'll get a warning that an external low-pass filter is required. Next, you can select what output power you wish to use. You have options from 5 to 200 milliwatts. Finally, the transmitted payload includes your transmitted power and, as you could be using an amplifier or an attenuator to modify it, you have the option of setting this as needed. If you're not modifying it, just leave it as whisper light output power. Be careful if you do choose an output power to make sure that you select watts or milliwatts correctly. The final two settings are down to how you wish to use your whisper light and aim to maximise results but minimise interference. Repeat rate determines how many of the available two minute slots your unit uses to transmit. If you select 100%, it would transmit every two minutes, so 30 times an hour. Selecting 20% should result in about six transmissions an hour. You can limit how long the device runs for, so if you just want to analyse aerial performance, this stops you arbitrarily transmitting for long durations. Once we're happy with our configuration settings, we hit the Save Whisper Settings button, and these are written to the Whisper Light. You can change the configuration of your device as often as you like. Just plug your Whisper Lite back into your PC and rerun the configuration tool. The final part of the SOTABeams offering is the DXplorer web analysis tool. Anyone can access the basic version of this to try, but as a Whisper Lite owner, you have access to a premium service. You can access this for the first time by selecting the Open in Browser button or copying the unique URL shown and pasting it into your browser. Don't forget to bookmark this so that you don't have to come back here to get the link again. OK, here is the main DXplorer window with buttons to select the different views and set up any filtering. You can check you have access to the full features by ensuring it says Premium Mode in the top right hand corner instead of Standard Mode. And if at any time you're not sure about some aspect of using Whisper Lite, the Configuration Tool or DXplorer, there is a link to the Whisper Lite help file here. So let's take a quick look at the features of DXplorer. DX10 table gives a nice summary of the stations that are received you, ordered by distance, but instead of listing every hit individually, it simply records the number of hits or counts. Where you have configured a comparative station, their stats will also be recorded here. The DX10 graph view gives a continuous measure of the most distant stations to receive you. You can change the duration of this view and, again, in comparison mode, the other chosen station's results will be included. The spots map provides a global map with the positions of the receiving stations marked. In comparison mode, different colours indicate whether you, the other station or both of you have been heard. Hovering the cursor over these spots reveals the distance and the signal to noise ratio that you were received at. The spots table is a raw list of all your spots. You can export this for further analysis if you like. The new call and band page enables you to add your call sign and select which bands you want to view results for. And finally, the new comparison page enables you to pick another Whisper Beacon station to compare your results with. OK, let's get this thing connected up and on the air. We connect to a well-matched aerial and connect up a power supply. Here I'm using a simple battery power supply. You'll see that the LED starts flashing slowly to indicate that it's powered and ready to start. We wait until the start of an even minute at which point we press the power button on the front of the whisper light like so. The steady LED indicates that the unit is transmitting and that will go off at the end of the two minute transmit cycle and will re-illuminate every time the unit is transmitting. The unit will give three green short flashes and one long green flash at the beginning of each two minute cycle. So you know it's running and the start of the longer green dash should mark the beginning of the minute. 
So as I start my whisper light, you can hear what the transmission sounds like on a receiver in my shack, and we can have a look at some of the results. I've been running the whisper light for a few days on my 40 metre dipole, first at 11 metres above ground level, then at 6 metres above ground level to compare the effects. I've also run the whisper light on a small magnetic loop to look at how directional it might be as it has deep nulls on receive. One of the issues with analysing changes on a single aerial over a few days is that propagation changes can make the results incomparable. The joy of the Soda Beam's offering is that I can simply and easily use the results of another whisper station local to me as a baseline in my comparisons to attempt to eliminate this problem as will both be affected by propagation changes. On D-Explorer I selected a new call stroke band, entered my call sign and selected the band I'd set up my whisper light on. When I select New Comparison, I can enter any whisper station I like, but D-Explorer naturally gives me a starting list with the most local stations who are operating on the same band at the very top. This table includes their output power, so I can select another station with similar output to myself. The DX10 graph view enables me to look at my maximum distances worked over time, which can indicate good operating times. And it also enables me to compare my results with another station so that as I make changes to my aerials, I can see the relative performance changes irrespective of propagation conditions. I can see that, unsurprisingly, dropping the height of my dipole reduces the performance compared with the other station. The magnetic loop results shown here in isolation were rather disappointing. But the map view does suggest directivity. With no comparison station, the D-Explorer map view colour codes the hits, light yellow for strong signals and dark orange or red for weak signals. So I've been using the Whisper light for over a month now, and I confess before I started, I didn't really understand what the point of Whisper was, other than seeing how far you could work with just a few milliwatts. Now I've had experience of using this little beacon for a few weeks, I'm starting to understand its potential as a way of analysing your local propagation conditions and also analysing your aerial performance, especially when you're making changes over time. My thanks to Richard for this whisper light to test and you can find this and many other interesting ham products at sotabeams.co.uk. So 73s, get out there and enjoy your radio.